please rise. <clears throat> and let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening. Amen. We gather on this first Sunday of Lent, and as is the norm for this weekend, our gospel is the story of Jesus being tempted in the desert. As we now enter into the, our desert experience of this Lent season, as we do our own battles against temptation in our lives, we take a moment now to pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you reconcile us with one another and with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds caused by sin and division. Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your heavenly Father. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, the priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Armenian who went down into Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and opposed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country, he gave us the land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the product of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach for it is you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. For one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live on bread alone. Then the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. And said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from Jesus for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever natural disasters occur, like the tornadoes this past week down in Alabama, 
Whenever some personal tragedy occurs in our lives, an illness, an accident, we can't help but ask, where is God? Why does God allow this to happen? How can we recognize the voice of a loving God in these moments of devastation and hardship? In today's gospel on this first Sunday of Lent, it shows Jesus during a similar time of struggle. He has left the River Jordan where he was baptized by John the Baptist, and he had a powerful experience of being blessed with his father's love. Now he enters the barren, lonely desert where he is tempted by the devil. Doubts come flooding over Jesus. Was the experience at the river to be trusted? Is he truly loved by God the Father? If God is so loving, then why do so many people go hungry? Why do the leaders and the powerful of this world grab for glory and wealth instead of looking out for the good of their people? Why doesn't God save beloved ones from disaster? What is at stake in all of these questions is the struggle of who is God? And who is Jesus Christ as the beloved Son of God? This struggle is most effectively seen in the taunts of the devil. If you are the Son of God, do this. And so it is with us too. When misfortunes, disasters of nature, daily trials befall us, they can shake our self-understanding and can cause us to question our reliance upon God. We need to realize that these readings on this first Sunday of Lent do not provide reasoned arguments in answer to these deep questions. But they do show us a way to engage the struggles that we encounter in life as we are invited more deeply into the mystery of suffering and death and rising as God's cherished children. The first reading from Deuteronomy reminds us of the long history of God's saving deeds. And it also reminds us that our faith in times of trouble is not baseless. In the gospel, we see Jesus relying on the word of God to guide and strengthen him. He engages in kind of a Bible battle with the devil, which reminds us that anyone can quote from scripture for their own purposes. Jesus shows us that daily immersing ourselves in the Bible can help us to recognize the authentic voice of God and can strengthen us to reject the temptations of the devil. In rebuffing the devil, Jesus unmasks the false allurements of believing in a God who would prove divine love by acting like an indulgent parent, giving in to our every desire. The devil may act like this, but not God the Father. Jesus replies to the devil reveal that God does not send misfortune to test us. Nor does God respond to tests that we construct in order to prove God's loving nature. God is not some sort of mean, sadistic puppeteer who plays with us to see whether we remain true and steadfast in our faith. Rather, God is continually drawing us ever more deeply into the mystery of divine love. And sometimes this divine love is most especially visible during times of great adversity and hardship. Lent is a special holy season that provides us an opportunity to embrace anew such struggles as Jesus faced 
with his temptations in the desert. Like him, we claim the power of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us in the sacrament of baptism. Lent calls us to daily prayer and reflection over the word of God and secret scriptures, which St. Paul reminds us in the second reading, is ever near to us, is in our mouth and in our hearts. Clarity in hearing the word of God comes to us when we make the time to be alone in our private place of prayer. Lent can deepen our sense of God's presence in our lives when we fast so as to sharpen our hunger for God. And Lent can unite us to God's love when we share alms with the poor and with those who are suffering. These practices of Lent prepare us to find God in the faces of those who suffer. And they can help us to be ready for the final struggle when death comes for us. And hopefully at that moment we can say, as Jesus said, into your hands, my Father, I commend my spirit. Our growing in faith question then on this first Sunday of Lent. Can I recall a moment when adversity brought me closer to God's love? As we recall moments of God's love in our lives, we now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begot not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God allowed his only Son to be tempted in the desert. We make our prayers to God this Lent, confident that God will always hear our voice when we cry out to him for help. Jesus, even as you were tempted by Satan, help us to call on your grace to resist temptation. Strengthen us on our journey this Lent as we work to become the people you want us to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our country, that they seek the path of justice in all of their decisions and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a parish, we are again participating in the Catholic Relief Services Rice Bowl program. We pray for people around the world who are hungry, especially children, that they will receive nutritious food that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the safety of all young people entrusted to the care of parents, teachers, pastoral workers, and for the healing and consolation all affected by the sexual abuse of children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for St. Michael's successful spring fundraiser. Bless all those who were involved in any way with this fundraiser and help us continue to work toward, work together as a parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died, especially Marcus Gross, Sr., Don Gross, Jim Jacobson, Tyler Jacobson, the special intentions of this Mass, for Francis Pauley of our parish, and for Damien Gross, nephew of Naomi Gross of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions in our prayer basket, for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, we pray the prayer for vocations found in the back for Ms. Lutz. Lord of the harvest, your word finds a home in our hearts, calls us into community, and invites us to generous service of the human family. Bless with courage and spirit your priestly people, called to full participation in the one body of Christ. May many choose to respond in public service to your call, offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us be seated now for the preparation of gifts. Please join in our song for preparation of gifts, number 658, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling, number 658.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Get up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples. Saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
Mystery of Faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Michael and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and all the people you've gained for your own Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow the world, all is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our communion song number 128 in these days of Lenten journey, number 128. Announcements. First of all, a reminder, we go back to uh, savings time tonight, so move your clocks up an hour before you go to bed this evening so that you'll be on time tomorrow. 
The uh, Shelby County Nicaragua Partners are sponsoring a breakfast tomorrow morning from 9 to noon in the Rosemont Parish Center. They'll be serving pancakes, bacon, country ham, eggs, fruit, homemade cinnamon rolls, coffee and juice. Free will donations will be accepted. The uh, first adult faith formation session that was supposed to take place this past Thursday was postponed because of the bad weather, but it has been rescheduled now for this coming Thursday, the 14th of March. And again, it will be from uh, 7 to roughly 8.30 this Thursday evening, and all are invited to be part of that. And also, we remind you that uh, we have begun the Stations of the Cross on Friday evenings at 5.30 here in the church, and that the Knights of Columbus Fish Fries began this last Friday and will continue throughout Lent, again from about 5.30 till 7 o'clock in the Rosamond Parish Center. Also, we neglected to mention at uh, Ash Wednesday that the rice bowls are at the entryways to the church. Uh, you're welcome to use these rice bowls as a means of almsgiving during the season of Lent. You should have received your annual diocesan appeal pledge card in the mail. You can return the card in the collection basket or by mailing it to the rectory or even to the diocese. Please return the cards with checks made out to the Diocese of Des Moines as soon as possible. We have been receiving a good number this past week. We have not yet received the first uh, totals of uh, contributions, so we have no report to share with you this weekend, but hopefully next week we can let you know how we're progressing and how things have begun here at St. Michael's Parish. The uh, Catholic Daughters Court of St. Maria Goretti will be sponsoring a baby show shower throughout this month of March. Uh, all items will be no donated to West Central here in Harlan. You can place them in baskets there in the, uh, on either side of the baptismal fount. Also in the bulletin, you can see a list of items that are needed for this baby shower. And so we, again, thank you for all the various ways in which you support second collections and give to the poor here in Shelby County in Harlan. The uh, Shelby County Catholic School is holding its annual Go for the Green raffle. Uh, tickets are $10 each. The winning ticket holder will receive half the money collected. And I was reminded that last year the winner received $10,000. So that was $20,000 total and some, what, 2,000 tickets sold last year. So hopefully we'll have as good a ticket sales as this year. Uh, Jason and Shara Rao will be selling tickets, I believe, in the back of the church through the 20th of March. And the raffle itself, the drawing, will take place on Friday, March 22nd, up at St. Joseph's Parish in Erling at their fish fry. So... Uh, we'll wait to see who the lucky person is who will split the growth of the green pot this year. Also, we want to bring to your attention that this Thursday we are going to have our Lenten Healing Mass. We've been doing this for years. We normally do it on Tuesdays, but this Tuesday there is a priest workshop in Atlantic, and then the other Tuesdays are all booked up with stuff going on. So we're going to do it on Thursday at 9.30. Uh, we will not have noon Mass on that Thursday, so be sure to get that in your calendar. Healing Mass at 9.30, no noon Mass this Thursday this week. And finally, Chris uh, T. Uh, asked me to uh, ask you uh, that we're going to need some fans. Uh, some of you mentioned that you saw driving up the ramp there on the west side that, yes, we have water in the rectory basement. Uh, what we discovered about 3 o'clock this afternoon is that uh, water was coming in from outdoors. Uh, we weren't getting the flow going out to uh, 18th Street like we're supposed to. So you notice he dug a channel there that's got the water out of there, but we had about two-thirds or three-fourths of our basement covered with water, and he's now trying to get the water out of there, get the shop vac going. But we need fans so we don't have a mildew pro problem. So if you've got some extra fans that you know, can spare, uh, go home, bring them back to the rectory, and we'd be very much appreciative so that we can try to take care of this problem and get it resolved, and hopefully we won't have a repeat of this in the future. So we appreciate your help and assistance in that regard. Let us stand and pray. Renewed now with this heavenly breath, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 581, Companions on the Journey, number 581.
We will sing two verses. Oh, oh, oh. 